Kia ora year 11, this is the third video going over the AS Algebra and Functions test. So in this video I'm going to do three little questions. They're a little bit harder in some ways than the earlier ones. Um, they're all to do with the applications of quadratics. So here's the first question. Um, we've got a quadratic. So if kx squared plus 4x plus 6 is equal to 0 has got two real roots, determine the value or values of k. So what we need to do first is to say what we're using and that's the idea of the discriminant. So if it's got two real roots then it means it's crossing the x-axis twice. Now it could be an upside down parabola or it could be the right way up but it crosses twice. So that happens when we've got a discriminant which is strictly positive. So two real roots means that b squared minus 4ac is strictly greater than 0. Sometimes we write that discriminant as a little triangle delta. Okay, so you might see that. Right, now we have to say that we're doing that, otherwise the person who's reading it has no clue why we're talking about this thing here. Right, so let's go through systematically and say what's a, what's b, and what's c. Well, a is equal to k, b is equal to 4, and c is equal to 6. Substituting those into the discriminant formula gives me 16 minus 4 times k times 6, which is strictly positive. That gives me 16 minus 24k is strictly positive. 16 is greater than 24k. And now dividing through by 24, I get 16 over 24 is greater than k. And I can simplify this to give me two thirds, um, removing by division a common factor of eight. So we're going to write our final answer as k is less than two thirds. So there you go. So that's a pretty simple question. Often with these ones, you'll end up getting a quadratic in k, and then you're dealing with a quadratic inequality, which is a little bit worse. But here I just got that k is less than two thirds. Okay, on to question number four which is an example of everyone's favourite algebra thing, completing the square. So we're given a function here, and we have to express it in this form here. Now, why is that useful? Because it lets us very easily find the minimum value of f of x. So I'm going to do this algebraically, then I'm going to show you the graph over in GeoGebra. So let's start with the function in expanded form. Oops, that's not that, it's minus 4. How do I complete the square on it? Well, the first thing I do is that I don't really like having this 2 here. So I'm going to partly factorise just the first two terms. So we're going to leave the minus 4 where it is. So we get 2x squared, 2 bracket x squared, minus 1 half x, minus 4. Now, to complete the square on this, we'll leave the 2 sitting here. So we've got this, and we're going to go x minus 1 quarter squared minus 4. But now I've accidentally added in something in here. This squared times 2 has come in kind of by mistake. So I need to take it out. So I now have to subtract 2 times 1 quarter squared. Right, I'm going to finish this off and then I'm going to go through this step a little bit more slowly. So what does that give me? Well it gives me 2 times x minus a quarter squared minus 4 minus 2 sixteenths which equals 2 times x minus a quarter squared minus well, this is 1 8 here, this little fraction here, minus 33 over 8. Right, now let's take a look at what we've got. We've rewritten f of x like this. So where is it going to have a minimum value? Well, this thing here is a squared number. So the lowest value it can ever be is 0. And that will happen when x is equal to 1 quarter. So when x is equal to 1 quarter, this whole thing is 0, and my function is going to have value negative 
33 over 8. So that's the minimum value of the function. So there's quite a few things buried in this question. Um, this is a harder example of completing the square, so if you're really not following this, go have a look at my completing the square video, and I think that's on the level 2 algebra playlist. Okay, so um, we'll take a look now at GeoGebra and see if our answer makes sense. Where is it? So here's GeoGebra here. I'll just get rid of those two, that's the next question. So here's my parabola. This is 2x squared minus x minus 4. I can't get the stylus to work on here. Oh yes, I can get the stylus to work on here actually. I just have to remember how. Anyway, we can see this point here is my minimum. And you can see from those numbers that have just flashed up on the screen that it is indeed happening when x is 1 quarter and y is negative 4 and 1 8. Okay, so let's go back to the OneNote presentation and see again what we did in there. All right, so just going over it one more time, f of x here had this 2 x squared minus x minus 4. So that made it a little bit muckier. Usually when we do completing the square, we focus on these two terms. But if we've got a coefficient here, we want to factorize that out first, so that we're working with 2 times x squared minus something. All right? So this divided by 2 is to undo the 2 out here. And then we just leave that minus 4 sitting there, and we need to get this into perfect square form. Right, so we have x here and x here. We want to end up with take away a half x. So we take away a quarter x here and take away a quarter x here. So we get x squared minus a quarter x minus the second quarter of x. And now we've got this bit added in. So that's 1 16th, but then it's getting times by 2. So we've added that in, even though it wasn't in here. So we now have to take it out. So it's minus 2 times 1 16th minus 4. So there, now I've done that question twice in one video, which is kind of a waste of time, but never mind. Right, on to the last question. And the last question is a simultaneous equations question. There are two ways that we can go with simultaneous equations. We can use elimination, or we can use substitution. So in this case, what I'm going to do is... I'm looking at this here. I'm going to substitute something into here. Now I've got lots of x's. I've got x squared and I've got x. So what I'm going to choose to do is to substitute in the y. That means that I'm going to take equation 1 and rearrange it. And we'll call it equation 1 dash. So we get 2y is equal to 3 minus x. y is equal to 3 over 2 minus x over 2. I'm going to take this and I'm going to substitute it back into equation 2. So equation 2 is going to be this, x squared plus x times 3 over 2 minus x squared is equal to 2. And we're getting a little quadratic here. Expanding that out gives me this, x squared plus 3x over 2 minus x squared over 2 minus 2 equals 0, right? I'm getting it all to one side to get ready to solve the quadratic. That gives me x squared, so I've got x squared here minus a half x squared here. So that gives me 1 half x squared plus 3x over 2 minus 2 equals 0. But I really don't like fractions, even though I'm a maths teacher, so I'm going to times everything through by 2. That leaves me with x squared plus 3x take away 4 equals 0. So finally it's collapsing into a really easy little quadratic. And we get x plus 4 times x minus 1. There are two solutions here, either x equals negative 4 or x equals 1. But we need to find the value for y. So what was y? Well y was 3 over 2 minus x squared. So we've got two solutions that we've got to find. y is equal to 3 over 2 minus negative 4 over 2, which is 3 over 2 plus 2 
which gives me three and a half. Or when x equals one, y is equal to three over two minus one half, which gives me y equals one. So my two solutions are these, negative four and three and a half, or one and one. Right, but what I have to do now is go right back to the equations and check that they actually work. So we've got x plus 2y equals 3, and x squared plus xy equals 2. So let's check first on negative 4 and 3 and a half. Well, we've got negative 4 plus 7. What's that equal to? That equals 3, which is my right-hand side. And the second equation is the one that I used to work it out. So we know that one's going to be satisfied. But let's check anyway. We've got 16 plus negative 4 times 7 over 2, which gives me 16 minus 14, which is 2, which is the right-hand side of 2. Okay, So that's that point checked. And we can now check 1, 1. So 1, 1. 1 plus 2 times 1 is equal to 3, which is the right-hand side. So we've checked equation 1. And then we get 1 squared plus 1 times 1 is equal to 1 plus 1, which is 2, which is the right-hand side. So equation 2 works. So both of those solutions hold. Right, so my solutions are negative 4 and 3 and a half and 1, 1. Let's go to GeoGebra again and see what this graph looks like, because it's quite a cool graph. Let's get rid of our parabola and we'll pop on these two. So the red line there is the first equation, x plus 2y is equal to 3. Where's my pen? I think I can get a pen to work in here. Hmm, no, can't see it. Anyway, so that equation there is the one that's about to disappear. That's x plus 2y is 3. And then the next one is the cool one. That's x squared plus xy equals 2. And you can see where the intersection points are. There they are there, right? So two of them, exactly as we found them. Okay, um, I'll just hop back over to this video here. So there was quite a lot in this one. Things that you need to be really confident with are simultaneous equations. We've got two methods on those, elimination or substitution. Um, what else? Quadratics, b squared minus 4ac, the discriminant, is really important for solving problems about quadratics. And the last thing that we had in this video was the technique of completing the square. So I hope that helped. Please leave me comments if there's anything in here that didn't make sense um, or if you want to um, know where to go to do extra practice on it.